Great to see everybody. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. We've got a special episode today. We are going to be talking with the CCO of Bioxytran, ticker BIXT, on the OTC QB market. Now, we have talked with Mike about six months ago, but we've got updates to share with you today. Now, we're not going to go deep into the drugs today because we've got that video six months ago, and we talk a lot about their two drug candidates. The company is a clinical biotech with two revolutionary drug platforms. Their first is their oral glycovirology drug, which recently completed phase two trials with top line results of 100% viral reduction in seven days for COVID-19 by neutralizing the virus before it enters the cells. And they've also found that this works on many other diseases as well. And we're going to talk about that. The company's second drug candidate is being developed for strokes and hypoxia. This is tissue starving for oxygen. BXT25, because of its small molecular size, can carry oxygen to areas where blood can't get to. And to tell us more about these drugs and the progress that they're making, we have Mike Sheik with us today. How you doing, Mike? Uh, good. Good to be here again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, again. I told you we'd be glad to have you back. As I said, you were here back in May. So, folks, if you want to see that video, it was back in May. But it seems like it was a lot longer than that. And you've had a lot of progress since then as well. Last time we talked, you were saying that your primary concerns were getting into that phase three trial for your prolectin M and that you were looking for funding so that you could continue those trials. How about catching us up on where you're at right now, Mike? Yeah, sure. Happy to. So we have initiated our dose optimization study. So the dose optimization study is the study, the small study prior to our phase three, which we have approval to proceed on. Mm -hmm. um, but we got it. We got to get that done because those those that dose optimization study is going to inform um, the design of the uh, phase three. Um, we're excited. Uh, we have initiated it. So, you know, a lot of investors might be thinking, OK, well, what does that mean? That means we're we're trying to recruit patients, um, and, you know, and then one of the things that uh, investors should be looking to is looking how prevalent COVID is in, um, in India, because that's, that's where we're recruiting our patients from. And right. unfortunately, uh, it's not as prevalent as it is here. Um, uh, really? there's, a, there's a huge, there's actually a huge disparity. So, um, inevitably there will be a surge. I mean, it always happens. Uh, th there's this new HV one, um, variant out there and, and, there's there's people all around me that are telling me how contagious it is, um, hmm. but you know eventually that that way is it's going to make its way to these uh, big population centers like China, um, India, and and there will inevitably be another another outbreak. I mean we don't want this to happen, but inevitably right. it's it's going to happen. We can't stop it. Um, so uh, that that kind of gives you an update on uh, what we're doing there. Now we we don't have uh, we, we don't have the funding in place, but we kind of do, in the sense that um, if you look at our filings, uh, we have an S one in place. We have an institutional investor, uh, Triton, um, and uh, you know it's kind of like uh, a line of credit that, you know, for us if you if you look at it that way. Um, you know we control we give notice when we want to take down uh, the money. Um, so yeah, you're, you're bringing it up. Okay, good, good. Um, so, so anyhow, that's the, uh, that, that's kind of the situation on the funding, but uh, we have other, you know, we're working in other ways to do this. Um, one of the things that I am, that, that I talked about uh, recently here is what we're doing is we're looking for non dilutive ways to fund the company. Um, okay. So what the heck does that mean? Well, yeah. what I found out is that there are at least, and I've identified this list, um, and I went and did a whole special presentation, I think it was on emerging growth and 
Yeah. And I refer to those right. videos there. But um, there's 150 companies that are trading below cash that are biotechs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so what we what we did what we're doing is we're going after small pharma instead of big pharma. So like we've tried big pharma, um, and what we what we've seen is well, just you get us more data. Okay. Um, but you know, I've kind of seems to me that the small farmers would be hungry. No, they're hungry. they're hungrier, yes. Yeah. Well, and why is that? Because when you're trading at let's say a, a 50, 60, 70, 80 percent discount to cash, are your investors happy with you when you're trading at let's say 20 percent of your cash value? No, so, <laughs> no, they're not happy. So, um, you know, here's here's our pitch. Here's our pitch. Um, and uh, we go to a small pharma and we say, look, look, guys, um, your investors are not happy with you. The stock's under pressure. Um, you guys got to do something. And typically the reason they're under pressure is because their, their drug is not doing that well. People don't believe that it's going to work. Well, there's, there's very few people that are, when you look at our clinical trial results, we had 100% efficacy. Right. There's very few people that are going to look at that and, re and realize that, you know, this is not an approvable drug. No, you're darn right. This is an approvable drug. Um, and we're, we're very, you know, adamant about that. I mean, there aren't many uh, drug companies out there that have, I, I can say this with a fact, no one has a better I can say I can't say we have the best, but we do. Um, but I can say, <laughs> um, uh, the best chance of 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 uh, you know uh, coming to our endpoints, right? Because yeah. we've done it. We had one hundred percent efficacy. We we uh, met our endpoints, and we had a p value point oh oh one in the last trial. I mean, these are these are good numbers, and a matter of fact, they're so good that it's like one in 10,000 good. And I, I think I'm rehashing things, so I'll, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there, but um, we're going after small pharma with the pitch that look guys, I have something that I think could be bigger than penicillin for. Um, That's huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. Penicillin and, changed the world. You know what? Let, let's just talk about that real fast. Penicillin did change the world, is um, because if you think about it, right now, let's say you know you got there's teenagers out there that don't have pimples on their face. Why? Antibiotics. You see, penicillin came first, and then all these antibiotics followed afterward. Right. Right. So we have a drug. And oral drug, uh, you'll see it's prolectin M. And then the idea is we're going after COVID, but then there's all these other viral diseases that follow after that. You see? All right. So I don't, so, so my pitch to the drug company or to small pharma is hey, we got something that's bigger than penicillin. Work with us. You guys got angry investors, um, you know, knocking at your door. What we have is a pipeline of drugs that you need. Why don't we use your money, my pipeline, form some sort of joint venture and do this? Let's do this trial. Let's prove this technology out. And then let's go flip this to big pharma for billions. How's that? How's your progress so, been on that front? You know, actually, we, we have had progress since, uh, since my video on emerging growth. We've had progress. I've signed one NDA, and um, the other one I put a I, I I did put a we did put a bid out there um, uh, for a company. So we are active in the space. Um, we're you know we just like I said we just started a couple weeks ago. Um, so it takes it takes time, but um, I feel very comfortable with this strategy. So that's one of the ways that we're also pursuing um, financing. So don't think of it as we have to go to the public markets is, is the only way to find financing. Um, there's right. plenty, like I said, most of these 150 companies, a lot of them are NASDAQ companies, and we can kind of almost kill two birds with one stone 
um, you get a NASDAQ uplisting and, you know, that provided we were to go um, reverse merger um, uh, route. Um, and I'm not saying that we're doing that, but, you know, our, our, my, my primary goal is a joint venture, you know, because this way, this way you, you know, you get to know the person, you get the date a little bit, so to speak. Um, yeah. You know, you don't, you don't make that big, huge uh, jump. You know, because how do you know the corporate cultures are going to match and, and stuff like that? But um, so it's a little bit easier of a of a route. But you know, there's some companies that work, or it clearly makes sense to to just take over. And and the good news is, um, I think that's where the money is. I think invest because VCs are not funding biotechs. There's no there's no money coming into biotechs anymore. Um, so that's the that's the path forward for small pharma is consolidation. You know, the sure. market's calling for consolidation. So you know, we're a company that's ready to to help with that. You know, and and we got a pipeline, um, and we got companies out there that need pipelines, need something new, something that's to cool. energize their investors. Speaking of your pipeline, you've put out a couple more peer review articles. You had one we looked at six months ago, which did outstanding peer review articles don't really get a lot of readings and yours got a ton of yes. readings so i see you've yes. just had two more with i wasn't even looking at how many people read them i was looking at the information you put out some tremendous new information stuff about doing um a patent with your prolectin m which now works with what is it up to 60 different diseases well that was the tumors <laughs> We don't Am know. We don't know right? how many. We don't. So, John, I'll correct you. We don't know how many it works on, but we we have a, the patent names sixty um, viruses. So we have to do a little bit of work there. Um, but uh, let let's take a look at what we have done. We've done in vitro studies on COVID nineteen. We did an in vitro study on RSV and an in vitro study on influenza. And guess what happened? That's so our results showed that our molecule or molecules, we have two of them actually, um, are going to work in those disease indication in, in those different disease indications in vitro. Now, COVID 19 is the only one that, that we've tested in the clinic. However, we have another uh, preprint, there's a preprint out there, a journal article. It's, it, this one wasn't peer reviewed. Um, that, that shows what our binding mechanism is. Our binding mechanism is our spike protein, or our, I say our molecule binds the spike protein, um, and we used NMR spectroscopy, which is basically, it, it's, it's, it's imaging that uses, um, <laughs> how do I say this, Physi nuclear physics if you would, to prove that two things bind to each other. So we can say scientifically or mathematically rather, not scientifically, mathematically, that um, we can prove that our molecule binds to the recombinant spike protein. All right? Yeah, you were telling us last time, it doesn't do what all the other drugs have been doing, going to the top of the spike, but on the outside. Yeah, we go, we go, to, the, yeah, we go to the side, uh, we right. go to the galactin fold, um, I kind of think of it as a peanut shell around the nut. You just put a shield around that cell so nothing can get into it. You don't have to worry about DJ. Yeah, you can, you can think of it that way, but we're really, the, the, the shell is more around the virus itself. Ah. So, so not necessarily the, the cell. We right. don't have any, and, and, and I, I say that because, you know, from, from a scientific perspective, do we target the virus or we target the cell? If you're right. targeting the cell, you could have some sort of side effects. When you're targeting the virus, your chances of having any uh, side effects are nil because you're targeting something um, that's in that extracellular domain that's in the blood coursing through your veins um, that's be that, that goes between cells. That's where you're trying to neutralize it. So our molecule essentially neutralizes the virus. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what virus it is right now. You're you're finding that this 
this system works with numerous. Well, we're, we're excited. We, we know it works. We know in vitro that it works with three, right? And the mechanism of action is the is the same. Um, so we're very excited to figure out uh, the other viruses that it may work on. Again, all this all this R and D is contingent on funding, and it could be as simple. You know, it, it's this is not these tests, these in vitro tests. I mean, they're expensive. You know, they could cost anywhere between. Uh, let's say twenty-five, fifty thousand dollars for a test. But um, look at all the viruses that we could that we could go after. The thing that we don't know is like, like should we go after uh, HIV, for example? You know, there's so much evidence to suggest that this thing works on HIV. Maybe maybe that's the next one that we do. I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, what, what if we show in vitro activity in that? You know, how are, how are investors going to respond? Or do I need, maybe need to do another one? Maybe need to do a deadly disease like Ebola? You know, all, you know that, that, takes, that takes a higher level lab and, and stuff like that, a little bit more money. You know, where is our money best spent? How many disease indications do I need to show investors before they get a clue that this has broad spectrum activity? So yeah, so for people who don't understand, spectrum. indicators are different ways your drug can be used. And I've looked at some drugs and most don't have more than two or three at the mm -hmm. most. And sometimes one gets pulled away later because it isn't working as well as they, they thought. And you're talking about 30, 40, 50, 60 indicators? Yeah, I, know. I mean, that's, my, you know, as a matter of fact, I've got a, uh, you just brought on an interim uh, chief medical officer here recently. Leslie AJ, she said yeah. something here I would like to share with everybody because it's potent. She says down here about the patent. You have just applied for a patent for this prolectin M working with all these different diseases, right. correct? She says here, the patent represents a huge expansion of our intellectual property in the field of glycovirology. This patent indicates that our galactin antagonist represents potentially one of the biggest platform technologies in existence. How many big farmers that have over 60 disease indications can say it comes from just one platform technology? This patent covers some of the largest indications in virology and includes viruses such as COVID-19, influenza, herpes, hepstein Barr, shingles, hepatitis C, measles, mumps, rubella. I mean, I'm impressed here. It also covers very deadly viruses like Ebola, Marburg, and Nipa. I don't even know if I'm saying that one right. We are just scratching the surface and feel that follow-on research is necessary to prove the mechanism and overall importance of this technology and biotech field. That's mind-blowing. You're it covering really is. deadly now diseases one... and common diseases. Wow. Yeah, it, it really... That, that's a heck of a statement. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Leslie uh, Ajayi, uh, it's, it's actually he. Um, he he's, sorry, he's, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty amazing. He's written a number of journal articles, uh, probably, I think he's written over 70 um, medical, medically based journal articles. So um, he's really uh, an excellent addition to our team. And you know, his specialty is thinking outside the box on a clinical, uh, you know, drug design. So we, we think, you know, that's a that's definitely very uh, helpful for us because what we're looking to do is we're looking to get this drug approved as quickly as possible. We're looking we're looking to go through um, uh, the quickest pathway possible the most cost efficient pathway possible. Right. We are thinking um, with shareholders in mind. And I said this before, the way that we get compensated as a management team is through increasing the value of our stock price. We're not, in, we're not sitting here. I mean, we, we, we do have an accrued salary, but what we, you know, history has shown that we've, we've forgiven that. Or converted it into, or convert it into stock. You know, we haven't. You know, we're not. So the bottom. Why I bring that up is because we're aligned with shareholders. We want to increase the the value of the company, 
That's why we're looking after non-dilutive forms of financing wherever we can find it. But we'd still need to, but you know, we need to be realistic. We need to keep the ball rolling if we can't convince one of these small pharmas, hey, join us and let's make let's make hundreds of millions of dollars together. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, so to speak. Right, right. Now I heard from you. I, I was doing a lot of research trying to see how much progress you've made since the last time we talked. And somehow I missed it, but you and I were talking just before the show. And you were telling me that uh, the Prolectin M has had new discoveries that it can be used with tumors and is effectively working. No, 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 no. You need to. No, <laughs> that's not what that's not. That's cool. I knew I had to ask you because it was okay. mind boggling what you said. So straighten me out and tell everybody else what right. you're trying to tell me. You should, you should. Uh, I have a LinkedIn article and uh, it, it's on my LinkedIn page if you wanted okay. to bring that up. But, um, but what, what I said was there's, there's another uh, Galectin antagonist. There's three Galectin antagonist companies. Right. And um, one, uh, the last Galectin antagonist company, um, I mean, I'll, I'll just talk about them openly, they're called Galecto. And they came out, and it's, it's talked about in my article there. They came out with news. And you ready for this news? The news said yeah. that they use their Galectin antagonist. And here I am talking about a competitor, right? But check this out. They came out with news, and they had 60% responders rate in three weeks in a non-small cell lung cancer trial. I, I want you to think about that. So rhesus criteria, that's the criteria that they use to measure tumor shrinkage, means you have a responders rate, a response rate, if you're over 30% tumor shrinkage. Mm -hmm. So their drug in combination with another immuno oncology drug shrunk tumors. 60% of the people shrunk tumors in three weeks. I want you to really, really think about that. Now, the immuno-oncology drug by itself called ten Tencentric, their historical real-world numbers are 10.2% in three months in this disease indication. Yeah. Okay, so here this new drug combination comes in and it goes 60%. Now we're just we're just we're just roughing these numbers out. It's fifth, it's it's five times better mm -hmm. in, in just three weeks. I mean, you know, I mean there's something there's something's going on here. Now, is this a fluke? The answer is no. Because last time I I think last time on an interview, I talked a little bit about cancer. Another uh, Galectin antagonist that was uh, about four years ago had similar results. They had a hundred percent responders rate in three, uh, in, in basically I think I think was I think it was four months. It could have been three months, but in four months they had a hundred percent responders rate in a cohort of patients, and one of those people had a complete response, which is basically the tumors are all gone. Wow. I want you to think about that. So we had a Galectin antagonist four years ago. Incredible results. No one cares. <laughs> okay. Then we have a new Galectin. And, uh, no, actually, it's not no one cares. Um, they they kind of seem to pivot toward cancer, toward liver disease. And then we have a new Galectin antagonist that was tried in, 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 in cancer with an immuno-oncology drug, just like theirs was, right? Theirs was tried with Kichuda, and this one was tried with Tencentric. And guess what happens? In, in another two months when, or three months when they come out with their data, what do I think is going to happen? I think, I think they're going to put up the same numbers that the other company did and have 100% response rate in that cohort of patients. I want you to, I want you to think about that. We're getting rid of, we're getting rid of um, uh, cancer here. And what they said in the press release was, you know, we're pivoting toward liver for some liver disease. Now they were under a little bit of pressure um, because they failed a clinical trial. 
Um, and these are all facts and, and that I that I talk about. Um, and what I basically said in my LinkedIn article is, look, we're not going to let people that are afflicted with cancer not see this technology. That I think we have an obligation to mankind or humankind, rather. We have an obligation to get this technology out there. So and then are so you, are you going to turn towards that then since you see the drug can be used for cancer? Are you going to add cancer to your platform? Are you going to turn away? From if you COVID? go, if you, if you, since you have my presentation up, why don't you go down a couple slides and you're going to see cancers already on there. Okay. I can find so that. So it's, you. yeah, cancer is already, cancer ready is part of the master plan. Okay. Stop right there. No, no, no. Go back up. Look right there. You see it right there. This was part of the plan a long time ago, but what we, we have a little bit different strategy in clinical trial development than the other two companies that have had amazing. I'm here. I am talking about my competitors. <laughs> yeah, okay? you are You're telling <laughs> how great their technology is. Why am I patting them on the back? Because the, the truth is a target is a target. Right. We also target Galactin 3. So what happens when, when, when we go, our, our, our goal is to get this drug approved as quickly as humanly possible. And we're using COVID to get it done quickly because we can. It's a prevalent disease. Now, cancer is measured in months and years. Yeah. How long is COVID measured in? Days. Five days. Yeah. You see the difference, investors? I hope you're seeing. So we're going to use this to get the drug approved, and then we can embark upon a label expansion. So if, you are, if you're sitting there as a cancer patient and you're weighing all your options because you know how many cancer trials there are, and then you have an approved drug. Yeah, it might be for COVID, but it's, you're saying there's some there's some chance that this might work on you. I mean, how are, how reluctant are you going to be to take that? You see, it's that it's that out of the box thinking that makes us different as a drug developer. And as in, as investors, you should like that. You should love that. You should embrace that. You should be buying our stock, right? Because we're doing yes. we're doing things differently. Yeah, well, you have so much potential. The last time we were talking, you had two great drugs. You got your BTX25 and your Prolectin M, which are doing great things. But now it's expanding what you can do with what you have. I exactly. mean, 60 diseases is just mind boggling. I mean, you're talking virtually a miracle drug here. And that's exciting. Now, of course, a lot more research and due diligence will have to be done in all those areas. But as you said, you've got targets now. And as long as you have targets, you know where you're going and you can get there. And if you have a plan to get there quicker and cheaper, all the better. Thank you. Yes. Now, we had talked before about your share count. Um, we had asked if you were planning on doing a reverse split. You said you didn't see any reason to do that. You saw the value in the company. You still feel that? Yes, we do. Um, Good. There's there's no reason to do a reverse split at this time, for sure. Yeah, um, I bring it up because so many companies on the OTC are doing reverse splits right now. I mean, every week, multiple. And for the OTC stock players, it's scary. It, it, it's an earthquake, an avalanche. It's happening over and over again. So I ask it because it really calms our investors down, knowing sure. that that's not going to happen tomorrow, next week. And boom, I invested in you and you went and did a reverse split. It's quite heavy. No, but I, but I, I actually answered that already. Um, I said our yes. our interests are aligned with uh, management's interests are aligned with shareholders, right? You did. You did. Yeah. About those peer reviews, what sort of response did you get from the medical community? With the, the medical community, you, you see, that's the thing is the medical community really embraced the, the peer review uh, journal articles. Our phase two uh, journal article um, it made it into the top, I'm going to say 3% of all journal articles last year in, in terms of like social media exposure and stuff like that. We had a couple of social media influencers that really pushed this 
Um, because, because look, how often do you get a hundred percent responders rate in a peer reviewed um, medical journal? And, and I can answer that. You will get that once every 10 years. So there might be 10,000 clinical trials out there. Wow. And we are the guys that got it. We got the 100% responders rate. The last yeah. one to get 100% responders rate in, in a virus was uh, a drug called Harvoni. Um, and that was manufactured or sponsored by Gilead Sciences. Right. And now that was Harvoni ended up being a cure for hepatitis C. And just to give you a little bit of a, a background, the Gilead scientists went from 80 billion market cap over a couple years later to 160 billion market cap. Mm -hmm. And, and most of it can be attributed to um, getting that asset Harvoni. I mean, so I want you to, I want investors to think about it. We're, we're, the potential here is in is in the billions, not in uh, tens of millions. And right now, we're we're trading at a market cap of around twenty to twenty five million right now. Yeah, we're extremely undervalued, um, and I, I'm hoping that we get uh, our our value inflection point happens here soon when um, we start when when we announce that we've dosed started dosing patients in India. I think that could be uh, a really good catalyst. And then once we start dosing, you know, the, ho the hopefully the idea is that we're going to finish, you know, very quickly. Now, I wanted to ask you a question personally. You're doing all of this uh, yeah. trials for your prolectin M over in India, right? Right. You've, you've gotten through phase two. Now, when this does get through phase three and is approved, is it only sellable in India? The answer is yes. It is only it is only gonna our, our registrational trial will be in India. It will be made in India. It will be manufactured in India. Right. It will be distributed in India. Um, Not that we that's will, a small market by any means. It's the second it's market. More, yeah, it's small market. It's one point four billion people. So yeah. But the thing, the thing is, um, John, in India, you're not going to get the prices that you're going to get here in the U.S. Okay. Right. But you know, there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there. Um, once it's made and, and approved in India, the genie's out of the bottle. Okay. So right. there's no, there's no stopping this from helping humanity. That's, sure. that's my, that's my point. It's not, you know, if this, if this drug works on the other disease indications, we, we're very confident that it does, but, you know, but think, think about the, the future of this, all right. You have it. You walk into the hospital with an upper respiratory tract infection. You're coughing. You're wheezing. You just don't feel good. You've got the, the aches, everything. So you walk in there, and they, they they say, you know what? You have an upper respiratory tract infection. Here, take this drug. Go home. You're gonna feel better in you know maybe six hours, twelve hours, something like that. And then within about three days, you're gonna test PCR negative. And you're going to be able to go to work. And it doesn't matter if you have RSV. It doesn't matter if you have influenza. And it doesn't matter if you have COVID-19. So you just go in and they don't even do a test on you. They just look at you. They give you this drug. I mean, how cool is that? You know, that, you know, here we have a drug that could make it. I mean, let's, let's look at the, wouldn't it be cool to have a drug? where, and I'm not saying it does this yet because we haven't proved any of this, okay? But I'm just looking at the vision, a drug that literally makes you feel better fast and then gets you to work in three days. I mean, how cool is that? That's and, a lot and when you go back to work, you know day. you're not infecting people because you're PCR negative. I mean, that's basically what we did is we proved that, uh, or in our clinical trial, it showed 88% responders rate in three days. So we were, we, people tested, you know, nasal swab, a uh, PCR negative. Does that mean that they were over the disease? I'm not making that. I'm not making that claim at all. I'm just saying they, you know, nasal, nasal shedding is how we spread it real fast. They're not spreading the disease. They, right. you know, and, and they don't have any symptoms. So chances are they're over it, but did we you know, did we prove that to a virologist? Nah, no, 
But people, people aren't looking at that. People are looking at, did I, do I feel better? I mean, that's how they're right. gauged. That's how they're going to ultimately gauge whether or not. Empirical to evidence is what consumers use. That's what they're, that's what they're going to use. Yeah. Now you have just uh, actually applied for a, a new drug with the FDA, didn't you? Yes, and we and we yeah, and we basically they we got the we can start dosing people. So it's exciting. Now this is the same drug you're working with over in India, right? You're bringing it over here to America now. It's a, yeah, it's the same drug. Um, right. uh, it will be, you can go into clinical trials like uh, you know to, to see what we're doing. Um, it's a different it's a different protocol. Okay. Um, so, but it, but it's, it's going to be the same, it's the same drug, but, um, we're not like getting it in, in India. I mean, we're going to, we're going to probably make it here. Right, right, right. Yeah. So all the work you've done over in India is just helping you. Yes. To make it easier over here in the FDA. Yeah. And, and the thing is, um, the reason why this was so important for us to get the IND in the U S that's, that's what we, that's what investors want to know about. Why is that so important? Because that that event opened up the ability for me to talk to small pharma. Small pharma can't can't wrap their heads around an Indian approval strategy, but they can wrap their heads around an FDA centric strategy, right? Right. And that is why that was so darn important for us is because now I'm in the game with small pharma. Before, when I didn't have that IND, I was I really couldn't pursue that strategy. But that's why we can pursue that strategy now. And that's why that was so important. And investors, I don't think, have really grasped that yet. Hopefully this video and, and other videos that we've done you know, just keep keep beating the drum and people will get it. This company is is way undervalued. Yeah, right now the OTC market is undervalued. I mean, yes. it's taking a bloody beating. There's less people on the market. There's less trading on the market, less volume, less money. It's just less, less, less across the board. And a lot of good companies but, but, are John, you've seen, But you've seen the move on the RUT 2000, right? The Russell 2000? Yeah. That's, that's impressive. I don't know if it's going to play catch up. So um, I'm hoping that rising tide, I'm just trying to be optimistic here. <laughs> so well, you're, you're, you're stating what's happened, right? But, you know, I, I got to think that OTC is is eventually going to um, turn the corner. And if it yeah. does, if it does turn the corner, companies like ours are going to stick out because we got a low float or we got a, a relatively low float. Yeah. Um, we got a very, very, um, how do I say, ardent uh, 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 shareholder base. These yeah. shareholders, they know what they got. They're waiting for us to come out with results. Um, they're not selling down here. I mean, there's very, there's very little trading activity down here. And, and I think a lot of it is based on the idea that they don't want to sell. That they're into this long term. They want to see us do something good for mankind. That's what how they're in it for. How soon do you think it'll be before you hit phase three over in India? Roughly, um, just a guess. The, the truth is, the truth is, I I don't know, and I don't know when the next wave is going to hit India, and right. we might we might need that wave. You know, I mean, I don't wish a wave of disease on anyone, mind you, but unless that wave hits. Or we pivot our strategy to the United States because the United States is no shortage of of, uh, of patients. And and John, we're not going after patients with underlying medical conditions. We're going after the average person. And I want you, I want investors to think about that. We're going after the hardest disease indication there is. There's a graveyard of of companies that are pursued early stage COVID. Mm -hmm. And we have the best clinical trial results in the hardest disease indication that there is. So from, do we think our science works? I think you can, you can read between the lines what we think, what we believe. We're very comfortable 
that that um, when we get into trials, we're going to meet our endpoints because we've done it before. Yeah, we've I don't see any problems. I mean, the last time we talked, you were at, like you said, high 80s in three days, 100% in seven days. Yes. We, you can't ask for anything better. I mean, instant, maybe. But outside of that, that is well, John. Let, let's let's give let's give investors like a little bit of context, okay? And these are these are real numbers. The average person is going to take eight and a half days to clear COVID, and that's that's what the research says. And and the and the average person means that fifty percent of the people are going to be able to test PCR negative in around eight days. What we're what we what we were accomplished was eighty eight percent. Are oh, I see you're highlighting this, some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, just pointing out a few things as you're talking here. I see. Yeah, there. well, eight, so eighty eight percent of the people were PCR negative in um, in three days. That's just unbelievable. I mean, that now, now, that's a now we game. can't. Now on we can't compare to Paxlovid, for example, the largest drug ever, um, because they're going after people with underlying medical conditions. So that's the difference between Paxlovid and my drug. Is okay. my drug has a much bigger market. We're yep. going after um, people with standard risk. So people like you, John, people like me, standard risk people. I don't have any underlying medical conditions. Right. So standard risk persons. And and you know what? A standard risk person, how fast can they clear COVID? Oh, I don't know, maybe maybe two, three days, maybe you know, some people less. But do you want to be sick for two, three days, or would you rather be sick? The least amount out. of time, thank you very much. <laughs> you know, the least amount of time is is, is better. Um, you see, what happens in our bodies is our bodies initiate, a, a healthy person initiates some sort of immune response. Does an immune response happen like that? No. It takes, so. it takes time for your body to, to build up that immune response. Now, when you're taking... Um, our our drug the way the mechanism of action works is it's a neutralizing effect right so as soon as it hits it, it hits the target it's neutralized that's it that's like more of an instant type thing it's not instant it still takes it still takes time to get into the blood um so it's not like boom all of a sudden you feel better nothing works that way it right, still right. still takes a little bit of time but it's it's much quicker in your body's uh, own immune system. That's what's so exciting about this technology. Now, just, just for clarity's sake, we know that you are looking at potentially 60 different diseases that you could be targeting. What is your focus going to be? Because that's a big plate. That's a lot of due diligence. And I know you're not going to shuffle off on all of them at one time. So you're looking at cancer. You're looking at COVID. You're looking at... No, we're not. We're not looking... No, timeout we aren't looking at cancer okay you're what, not no what we're because we have two we have two companies that kind of have already shown us that it works i don't need to show that it works there's two other companies that have galactin antagonists that have taken that have miraculous results i don't need to do i don't need to prove that i mean yes i will need to prove that with my drug when the appropriate time comes but the appropriate time hasn't come yet our strategy on cancer, and I'll be clear, is we're going to get the drug approved first, and then we can do rate expansion. Okay, so I don't want to mislead investors that we're going to start working on cancer. No, we're not. And what is the indicator that you're passing the drug for? Is it just one indicator? Yeah, we're going after COVID nineteen. We're focused on COVID nineteen. Okay. And then um, I could see us expanding to to um, RSV and influenza because of the dream that I just talked to you about. The dream is you go in for an upper respiratory tract infection, you just right. take this drug, it becomes a standard of care, you go home, you feel better, you test PCR negative in three days, and you go back to work. That's, I mean, so that's the label expansion that I, that I hope to do after, after right. COVID. 
Yeah, because you that, really don't need 60 different indicators to have a successful drug. As you said, you're going after the common person, the average person who gets these respiratory infections. That's a lot of us. I mean, that is a lot of us with, without any complications. And you get us back into the workforce, which is what the government wants. Get so, back John, out we did, start working. so we did three and we haven't had a value inflection point, right? So maybe I need to do another one to shock people. Maybe I need to do another after that. So the question is, how many disease indications do I need to show that this works on before investors get the idea that this is huge? So that's how many we're going to do because it doesn't cost that much. Good. So, Glad to hear that. so, so stay tuned, investors, because we we plan, you know, we plan on doing more we, um, because we think we think that if we do a couple more, you know, they'll get the idea that it wasn't a fluke, that it has broad spectrum activity. It can't be a fluke. I mean, you had I don't no. know how many people, 34 or something like that. And it, it, it was across the board, wasn't it? All right. Yeah. Was you know, when you when you win a game, um, well, you know, and we you could say that it was a game, um, uh, basically 100 to six. You know who won that game? You did. Exactly. Right. So right, we the had 100%. You got 100 percent. We got 100 percent in seven days. The control group got six. What more need be said? I mean, if that's not a, I don't, I don't know what it's going to take to to get through to investors that um, sure. this represents probably one of the best biotech deals in OTC. You are well uh, undervalued right now. Yes. I mean, it is a good time to get in because we know the drugs are progressing. We know we want to get those answers. We know the governments, whether it be India, America are all interested in backing these two. And when you've got results like that, how can you not move forward? How can you not hit the target and be where you want, want to be in a year or two years from now? I don't know how long it's going to take, but I can see you're heading in the right direction. Thank and you. it's very hopeful. I mean, when you put all those different diseases out there, it's one thing to be talking about upper respiratory infections, but measles, rubella, Ebola. Oh my God. You're talking about a very serious drug with potentials that others can pick up. As you said, you've got people working on cancer now with the same drug. I'm excited about it. No, not, not the same drug, same target, same, same target. target. Yeah. And, you know, so uh, galactin inhibitors have been shown to work in psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, um, cancer. Right. We played your game um, last time. We looked up galactin on pulmonary fibrosis, diabetes, um, NASH. We haven't proven there's a lot of literature that says diabetes. Absolutely. That's a small little indication, right? Um, but, you know, there's treatment out there, right? So you, we have to tap, you know, we have to go after, um, if we were to target things, we target things that are with unmet medical needs, right? Right, right now, is there is there a, a scientific argument for diabetes? Absolutely. All you have to do is go into Google Type in Galactin 3 and diabetes in Google, and you will start to see all the journal articles that suggest that a Galactin antagonist is going to do really good things for diabetes. But we can't go there yet. You know, we're a small little company <laughs> that has right. limited resources. we got to focus. And I want investors Agreed. to know we're highly focused on getting the drug approved. Um, you shouldn't care that it's COVID, but... A lot of people think COVID's over. Um, right. You know, that's that's your right to think that it's over. But we still have 20, 30,000 cases a day here. Um, I think it's that much. In, I'm not sure if it was a day or the week. They changed the metrics on it. But that's still a lot of people um, coming yeah, down yeah. with COVID in the United States. And can spread it. And can spread it. And it's still, so it's still not over is my point. Um, so a treatment option is needed and, um, we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. We just, we need to, we need to get this drug to market as quickly and as efficiently. We've covered a lot of things here, but I get awesome. the feeling I might have missed something. Is there anything you would like to bring to the people's attention that I may not have brought up? Um, we talked, we talked about our patent. 
or patent pending in, in this case. Patent pending, yeah. Um, we're really excited about that. Um, we talked about our strategy to fund the company going forward. Our non, you know, we want to go after non-dilutive financing. We're, cons we, we're, we're thinking of the shareholders. We talked about that. My small pharma strategy that I'm, I'm right. very serious about. Um, <clears throat> we talked about my LinkedIn article and how excited I am for the future. Um, I'm just a I'm proponent of, uh, of for cancer uh, patients. Um, that's just written into my DNA. It makes me who I am. Read my LinkedIn article. Um, and then you'll you'll understand why why I'm I'm so passionate about that, um, and uh, you know I, I think so I think I think we covered I think we covered a lot of new stuff. We did, um, and then then you know we're 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 anxiously awaiting um, uh, patients to recruit or, or not. I'm sorry, uh, we're anxiously awaiting dosing of patients in India. Right. Um, we're, we have an IND. I mean, so we, we covered all those things. We're, so lots of catalysts on the horizon. Yeah. Um, we do need funding. Um, we have a plan. Uh, we have an institutional investor behind us. Um, we should take, you know, so all it needs is a little bit of exposure and you know, we'll feel comfortable pulling the trigger. So. Uh -huh. Try hopefully, my best here for you, pal. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully the investors uh, um, see that the long-term potential and and want to put some money into it. And the truth is, they don't have to put much money into our company because um, if this does, you know, just a tenth of what I think it's going to do, there's going to be one heck of a return out there. So you don't have to put in much; just put in a little and watch it, watch it grow. The problem right now is so many OTC investors, traders are not really investing. They're playing the bounces. They're playing the runs. Yes. And honestly, right now is a great time to be picking up long holds because yeah. the market is so down right now. I don't care if it's cannabis, R&D biotechs, the EV market, everything is down. Find those winning companies you see have the potential like yours that have patents that are covering broad ranges of applications that have drugs that have shown supreme efficacy. These are the companies you want to get in on cheap and be patient, put them on the back burner and just let them sit there until the world gets better and watch these companies start coming back to life and watch your investment grow. I like your company, Mike. I like your product. You. I like you. <laughs> I like you too. So we'll do more of these. Yeah, the next time you want to come on board, just reach out to me. We'll get you out here and you can tell our investors what's going on. And investors, you, please keep up with uh, Mike's information. As I said, we've already done two interviews. We had one back in May. We cover his Prolectum M and the BXT25 in much more detail in the first video. This one, we were just doing the updates on where their company is moving forward. I appreciate having you on here, Mike. It has been fun. I look forward to seeing you in three to six months, maybe. Sounds good. All Thank right, you. folks. Thank you for your time. Remember, do your own due diligence. We're sharing some information with you. There's a lot more out there. When you're investing your money, it's your DD that counts the most. Thanks, folks. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.